This is an emergency. Gaza. Visit muslimhands.org.uk or call us today. Every moment is precious. My beloved Muhammad وسلم, is inside the paradise. And so, so paradise is not just Jiwar Allah, it's not just a neighborhood of God, but it's a neighborhood of the Prophet وسلم, it's his protectorate. And if you're in the protectorate of the Prophet وسلم, and nothing at all can bring harm unto you. And so alhamdulillah, I'm wearing one of his riyadh. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, one of the riyadh of Allah Ta'ala, his meadows, circles of knowledge. The maratum riyadh of Jannah, fartau. You pass by the meadows of paradise, then graze therein. Wa man riyadh of Jannah, ya Rasulullah, one of the meadows of paradise, O Messenger of Allah, hilak, hilak of dhikr. The circles of the remembrance of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and of its meanings, hilak al ilm. And we pray that this, inshallah Ta'ala, it's, like, it's a gathering of not just ilm, knowledge, mujarrad, but likewise, it's a gathering of dhikr, of the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The type of, type of dhikr, as Abu Talib al Makki would allude to, qutul qulu, the type of dhikr that brings sustenance to the heart, that brings life to the heart in and of itself, that cleanses the heart of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, dhikr saqala lil qulu, the dhikr is the cleanser of the heart, the purge of the heart, the remover of all of the stains, the ram, that are deposited upon our hearts, especially in the age in which we live in, and in environments in which we live in, an age of tribulation and environments of tribulations. But alhamdulillah, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi he comes unto us, and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi gives us a makhraj, as in the hadith of Sayyidina Ali bin Abi Talib, a makhraj, a way out, and a way that we can secure ourselves from perdition, a way that we can protect ourselves from destruction. And here, the issue of perdition and destruction is not worldly, it's not inside of this world, because this world shall come to an end. But the issue of destruction and perdition it relates to the world to come. And when Sayyidina Ali bin Abi Talib, Allah, when you ask the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, yawm idin. On that day, the day of perdition, the day of tribulations, what is the way out? And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, Kitab Allah, the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's that book where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ma faratna fil kitabi min shay. That we've not abandoned anything, anything inside of the book. It's that book that Allah Ta'ala says, Tibyan and Nikulli Shay. It's a clarification for everything and for anything. That's Kitab of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Abbas, Habr al Ummah, the great erudite one of this nation, Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Abbas, Ibn Abdul Muttalib, he said, Were I to lose the halter of my camel, the strap of my camel, I could find it inside of the Quran. He would say, That's somebody whose heart 
is attached to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's somebody whose heart is attached to the heart of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That is somebody who did not just the blood, but the very saliva of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam runs through the veins of Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhu warda. And we have to become of those people who find protection inside of the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And a part of becoming people of vikr is to become the elite of Allah Jalla al ula And we must have an objective in life. And who is it that you want to be in life? And we have to have objectives inside of life. And from the objectives in life is proximity to Allah Ta'ala. To be inside of his jiwa. From objectives in life is to be prox have proximate to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alaihi wa Sahih wa Sallam. In Ahlul Quran, um Ahlullah wa Khasatu, Kalam al Mustafa Sallallahu Alaihi wa Sallam. Yani the people of the Quran, they are Ahlullah. The people of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa khawasatu. And they're the elect, the elite of Allah jalla fil ula. And so the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is important. Because the age needs a shield. We need that which can shield us from the difficulties of the age and the difficulties that are approaching us in the age that approaches. And that shield is the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the messenger of God. Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Hekada with our topic, the topic of the Antichrist. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that he's going to inform us how to shield ourselves from ayatu rabbika, ba'du ayati rabbika, as Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says. That the day that comes that you will see some of the signs of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala manifest. That la yanfa' Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, la yanfa' nafsan imanuha. That the faith that you have will not benefit you one iota. Yani, who for? Save those people who prior to that day are people of deep and profound faith. People, people of itisar, connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Kalam Allah. What does the verse mean? Sayyidina Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu wa he says in the Sunnah of At-Tirmidhi that that day, the day when your faith will be of no avail, will not benefit you one iota. Thalatha umur. He says in the authority of the Prophet in the Sunnah of At-Tirmidhi, three things. The Dajjal, the Antichrist, first and foremost, is the first of them. And if somebody whose faith is not secured in the day of the Antichrist, their faith will be stripped such that they will leave the world into a world of destruction. The Na'ar of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second he makes mention of, radiallahu anhu, is the Daba. The Daba, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Daba, the beast that manifests upon the end of time. And that beast, in accordance to Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Amr, is the Jassas, the beast of the Antichrist likewise. And the second, when the beast manifests, fully manifests, at the end of time, khalas, first and foremost in the bawadi, inside the, uh, the, the outback, and then thereby at Safa, right there at Mecca, in Hajj season, that beast, when he manifests, if you do not have faith at that point, in, prior to that point, your faith at that point will not benefit one iota. And then likewise, tulu al shams bin maghribiha, likewise the rising of the sun bin maghribiha. From the westerly direction, the Prophet said, planetary retrogression. When that occurs, khalas, if you do not have faith prior to it, khalas, into hell amma. And what's the meaning of that as we try to sort of connect a meaning that the Prophet came with? You know, the first meanings we connected to the time in which we are in. This holy month, the month of Rajab in and of itself, Rajab al Asam. And this is the month of Tawbah, the return back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's what the Prophet of here is alluding to inside of the Hadith in the Sunnah of Eternity. That the manifestation of the Antichrist, it, it, if you've not returned back to Allah Ta'ala, repented to Allah Ta'ala, prior to that, when he comes, khalas, the door is sealed. The devil, when the devil, the beast of the Antichrist manifests, khalas, door is sealed. No Tawbah. There's no Tawbah in that day. When you see the sun rise from the westerly direction for three days, no Tawbah in Tal Amar. It's finished at that point in time. And then thereafter, Taqum Asa'a. You'll see that the hour will manifest ala al sharr nas The Prophet said of the most wicked, wretched of people that will manifest. And so these are moments we see, seek. And we seize these moments in which we're in. These blessed months. Months where the gateways of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are flung open. Such that we can return back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because our affair, the affair of dhikr, the affair of the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as we try to anchor this in some type of benefit, because we can all speak about the Antichrist till kingdom come, but how does that benefit us with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Yeah, many of us can sit and we can regurgitate that which we've learned about the Antichrist. Okay, for istafedta, how you benefited from your knowledge of the Antichrist. If knowledge, the nature of knowledge, does not increase you in proximity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, 
does not increase the likelihood of your protection from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then that knowledge is the proof against you upon the day of judgment. And we don't seek proofs against. You see, we want to be vendors of our soul to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As the Prophet sallallahu wa sallam said, Al-Quran, 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 hujjatan laka awa alayk. That the Quran is a proof either for you or is a proof against you. And every single one awakens upon each and every single day, like the day in which we're in. He says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ba'i'u nafsa. And he's a vendor of his soul. He either liberates it or he incarcerates it. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Is your soul being liberated? You see, because as we move towards the age, and we move radically, rapidly towards the age, then the age is just about beings of spirit. And if beings who are spiritually grounded, this is a fitan. The Prophet وسلم, a fitan, and the nature of fitna in the language of the Arabs, it relates to nar, it relates to fire, that it will scorch human beings, such that very few will survive it. In the tradition of the Rasul in Nu'im ibn Hamad, that there are, only, there are going to be 12,000 men and 7,800 or 7,700 women who meet the Antichrist, that they engage the age. And it, from the what the army of the Mahdi, from the people around the Mahdi, that's all. And Tisata Asha, Alayha Tisata Asha, 19, that's all, 19,000 of who are going to engage the age and they survive the age. That's it. So the age is going to scorch everybody else in their Balayin, in their millions, it's going to be scorched. Fitan. And that's why the Prophet وسلم, in the Hadith of Sahih Muslim of Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Abbas, yani the erudite one, Sahib al Quran, رضي الله تعالى عنه وارضاه. He said that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم used to teach us a prayer, and he would teach us that prayer in the same way he would teach us a surah from the Quran, the Hadith in Sahih Muslim. What is the prayer? Allahumma, O oh Allah, I take refuge in you from what the tribulations of hell, yani from عذاب جهنم, the chastisement, the punishment, the tribulation of hell. With and from the tribulations and the punishments of the grave, I take refuge in you. And from from fitnatul Messiah Dajjal, and from the tribulation of the Antichrist, Wamin Fitnatul Mahya'iwalmamat, and from the tribulation of life and death. As the hadith of the Rasul, the hadith of Aisha, radiallahu ta'ala anha wardaha, that the Prophet says, and this is the prayer he said in each and every single prayer. In each and every single prayer. Look at Imam Muslim, Muslim ibn al-Hajjaj, radiallahu anhu wa ta'ala, when he sat the hadith, when he raised the hadith, said, Imam Muslim, uh, of those who believe that he's the greatest Imam of hadith, especially Imams of the Western lands, of the lands in which we reside, those Imams of Ahlul Islam, of the Western sphere of Islam, they believe the supreme Imam and the supreme work of hadith of the Rasul was the work of Imam Muslim ibn al-Hajjaj, radiallahu anhu wa ta'ala. Muslim ibn al-Hajjaj radiallahu anhu warda, he speaks about the student of Abdullah ibn Abbas in the Senate. He's Imam al-Tawus radiallahu anhu warda. And he said, Imam al-Tawus, watch this son pray. Allahu Akbar, watch this son pray. And then when his son finished prayer, Sayyidina al-Tawus asked his son, did you say the dua of the Rasul about seeking refuge from the Antichrist in your prayer? And he said, la ya abati, no my father. He said, ud salataka, repeat your prayer. And your prayer is not valid with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the school that we do, the school Imam Shafi'i, Imams of the Shafi'i school believe wajib to say that prayer inside of your prayer. The prayer of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. It's the, the fitna of the Antichrist in and of itself. Asharrul fitna yun tuntadar, the Prophet sallallahu said. It's the most wicked reality that has ever awaited man. There's not been a single sin, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, that has occurred. Since the moment that Cain killed Abel, save that it's prepared the way for the manifestation of the Antichrist. The Prophet said. In the hadith of Nu'man ibn Hamad, the Prophet ibn Hamad, the Prophet said, This is the supreme fitna, the greatest fitna that has ever occurred since the creation of Sayyidina Adam up until the end of time. The Antichrist. And so how is it that we can be people of ghafla, people of heedlessness? And our heedlessness is but a sign of his manifestation. As the Prophet said, لا يأتي الدجال إلا على غفلة من الناس That the Antichrist will not manifest save when people are in a state of heedlessness على غفلة من الناس The Prophet said, The Prophet said, The Antichrist will not manifest حتى ينسى until he is forgotten على المنبر Upon the minbar 
When last did you, khalas, did you go to a khutbah al Jum'ah and you hear the khatib, the khatib himself, speak about the Antichrist and the fitting of the Antichrist? And why is it that we have to gather here to, to, to hear about the Antichrist? That is something the Imams like Ibn, Ibn Najah radiallahu ta'ala and who worked up, he raised on the authority of al Muharibi, he said that it's wajib on every teacher, every teacher to teach the tradition of the Antichrist inside of elementary school, the Qutah, to a seven year old kid. He said radiallahu anhu who worked up. Uh, the Imam, yani, uh, the Imam al Safarini, radiallahu ta'ala, and who were there, he says it's wajib, wajib, that the traditions of the Antichrist be taught to every children, every woman, and every man. That it must be taught in each and every single school. It's to be the age approaches of deep and profound tribulations. Just like we see in our age, Imams of centuries ago, they talk fitter in their times. And they didn't see nothing compared to what we see. And that which we become accustomed to, 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 desensitized to. Yeah, it must be taught in each and every school. You see, because the days, the ma'alim, he says, when the nation of the, when of the Prophet Sallallahu is declared as being bid'ah. That's what he said, Imam, radiallahu anhu warda. That when you see the people of the sunnah are being accused of being people of bid'ah, it's from the great signs of the Antichrist himself. And then you see the way of bid'ah, that becomes the way of people of this religion. And that the deen becomes a way of ibtida'ah, le'tiba'ah. It becomes a way of innovation, not a way of adherence to the way of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And so these are fitting. But yeah, the grandness of the fitting, of the tribulation of the Antichrist, it relates to how we fear in front of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. It relates to the fact that this is a being who will strip you of your faith. Strip you of your faith. Save if you're from Ibadullah al-Mukhlasin. You're from the slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who not that you're people of ikhlas, mukhlis lillah, that you're struggling for sincerity, but you're mukhlas. Your sincerity has been stamped with approval by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala such that you're from the people of Siddiq. Sadaqu ma'ahad Allah wa alayhi. Those who now have been truthful to the covenant that they've taken with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I mean, there's people who went before us who fared well with the Antichrist. But the Antichrist is not to come. The Antichrist, long time, he's already arrived. And you see the manifestation of the Antichrist even in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And from the manifestation of the Antichrist, but the Antichrist is a spiritual being. And the reality of him is bewildering. It's a spiritual reality, the Antichrist, in and of himself. And that spiritual reality, yet a just said. What do you mean yet a just said? It takes flesh and blood. There are those of the Imams who believe the Antichrist was demon. Shaitan. Sarrahu, Imams of the Salah. Sarrahu. Explicitly said that he's a demon. He's not from Banu, he's not from the inside. From those who says he's a shik. A shik means that he's half human, half demon. That his mother is a demon. A position of Ahl Islam who will insan. He's a human being. Hadith of Sayyidina Abu Bakr al Sadiq. That he's a human being. Say that he has control over Jan, demons, and he has controls over these shit. Those people who are half man, half demons. And he has control over those who are demons in human form. As the Prophet Sallallahu has said, Shayateen, demons, fi jufmani ins. In what? In the human form, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said. Of the manifestation of the Antichrist, real manifestation of the Antichrist inside of the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is called Musa. In the age of the Prophet Musa ibn Imran alayhi salam. That's in the Quran. It mentioned in the Quran, Samiri, inside of the Quran. Samiri. What is it that you have to say, O Samiri? And who is Samiri? And a difference of opinion about where his origin lies, Samiri in and of himself. But there's one thing that we understand is that the the colonization of the reality of Samiri, the colonization on behalf of the Antichrist. What is that? Is the Antichrist takes control of the actual being of Samiri in and of himself in order to perform his own bid. What is that? What well, Dalla, yeah, Dalla. Samiri, he calls the children of Im Im Banu Israel to go astray. And when Sayyidina Musa ibn Imran returns back from standing in the presence of God upon Mount Tur. And he finds that Banu Israel are now worshipping, and they're worshipping the quote unquote golden calf. And Sayyidina Harun alayhi salam points to Samiri, that he's the one who was who sent them astray. And then Musa ibn Imran approaches Samiri, Ma What is that you have to say about this rea reality? And then Samiri now speaks about the world of the unseen, the world of spirit. 
But he says, Qabatu qabdatan min afir al-Rasul. That I seize part of the traces of the Rasul himself. Okay? Of the messenger himself. The Rasul himself. Yani, who is the Rasul? And who's the Rasul he's speaking about? Yani, of traditional tafasir, traditional tafasir, the Rasul is Gabriel, alayhi salam. That ceremony now, yani, basurtu malam yusiru. I saw that which they did not see. That's what somebody says to Moses inside the Surah Al-Taha. Who did he see? Riwayat Gabriel. That's how specially understood. He sees Gabriel upon horseback. And when he sees the hooves of Gabriel lift, that somebody now takes hold of the dead beneath the hooves of the Archangel Gabriel. Okay? And then he takes that dead and then he blows it into the actual golden calf. So well at next scene. That's what I felt like doing, huh? That's the conclusion I came to. Huh? And so that the golden calf now begins to scream, scream, comes alive. And Banu Israel fall prostrate to the golden what? The golden calf. That being ceremony, the Rasul, that Rasul, that Rasul, who is the Rasul? Is it Gabriel or is it just Gabriel? Or is the Rasul also the Antichrist? And that's why, again, transmission Senate, this is not opinionated from our teachers, that's manifestation number one we can see. Of the Antichrist himself, who is whom? Samari. And that his form has been colonized, his spirit has been colonized by the Antichrist abstract. Such that it manifests through him. This is an issue of transmutation. You know, we know about Jibreel, alayhi salam, Gabriel, supreme transmutation. The nature of angels, by definition, they have the ability for transmutation. And they transmute into the likes of you and I. And he gave it, the most common known form is the form of whom? Dihil al Kalbi, alayhi salam, in the time of the Rasul. I, he colonizes the form of saying the Dihil al Kalbi, Gabriel the Archangel. And that's the nature of spirit, meaning it's not peculiar to angels. But jinn, the power of transmutation, the jet, they transmute. Like in Hadith of Sayyidina Abu Hurairah, radiallahu ta'ala, anhu wa ta'ala, when he's placed over the Bayt al Mal, over the treasury. And then he has an issue of the transmutation of a jinn, of a demon, who comes each and every single night to attempt to steal from the Bayt al mal And every single night, Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu goes to take him to the Prophet sallallahu but then ultimately lets him go and he, and he pleads clemency. And then eventually when Abu Hurairah lets him go because he teaches Abu Hurairah about the benefit of Ayatul Kursi, and Abu Hurairah when he goes to the Prophet sallallahu the Prophet informs us that was a demon who's a habitual liar, but in this instance, he's telling the truth. It's an issue of transmutation. But likewise, human beings, man, spiritual man, has the ability to transmute. Man, and you, you engage that more so in the wonderful and beautiful world of the awliya themselves. And of the issues of the awliya, that the transmutation of the souls of the awliya, it's true, unadulterated transmutation. What does that mean? They transmute just like angels into form. It, it, it's not like colonization of another form in the same way. And what do we mean by that? It's not the issue of demons, involving demons that are impersonating a human being. But it's the ability to truly transmute into form. That's the property of the awliya. But the property of people who have larger souls. But they've used those souls for evil. They have a type of transmutation, but it always involves the issue of the demonic will, the issue of the shayateen. That's the Antichrist. Okay. That's why the Prophet wasallam said that the Antichrist is a human being, but alongside him, shayateen, demons, tumethel, that are going to take the form of human beings upon his behalf. The supreme form, the protected form, is the form of the Prophet in the hadith of the Sahib al-Bukhari, in the shaitan, la yumethiluni, that the devil cannot take my form. And he cannot take my form. That's what the Prophet Sallallahu said. But it's as if, other than that, then it's fair game for demons. Even the form of God, quote unquote, we ask Allah Ta'ala for safety and security. That's tradition of, of the great Al-Jailani, Sayyidina Abdul Qadr al-Jailani, and when he sees a, a manifestation that is perceived to be divine. And then he informs Sayyidina Abdul Qadr al-Jailani about the degrees of ascension that has been granted. Yeah, they're playing God. And that all sins now have been wiped. Playing God. 
and that now the law, ribqa to sharia, the neck brace of the law has been lifted, fuqa'ank, it's been lifted from you, and praying God. And then whom saying Abdul Qadr al-Jaylani, he takes a stone and throws it towards the, the, the manifestation. And then the manifestation becomes dukhan. Fartaqib, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fartaqib, in your way seek the day. When you see the sky come, be dukhan in mubin, with evident smoke. Transmutation now. And then the voice emanates, now it's demons, the devil. Ya Abdul Qadr, Abdul Qadr, I have fooled 1,000 of God's awliya with that vision. 1,000 of them believed that they were engaging Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's problematic because it's a being that's going to play God. But if we're protected in the circle of prophecy, then we're protected. That's where you see the greatest manifestation of the Antichrist to date, fi ayyam al-Rasul, in the age of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa himself. And we're going to see the manifestation, flesh and blood, of the Antichrist. And you're also going to see projection of the Antichrist, the colonization of form. Where is that? Tradition in Sahih al-Bukhari and Sahih Muslim of Ibn Sayyad or Ibn Sa'id. And of those people inside of the age of the Prophet there's no doubt whatsoever you're dealing with the Antichrist. Ibn Sayyad, Ibn Sa'id. And who says so? Yani, Ali bin Abi Talib says so. Bab Madin al Ilm. And Halaf Billah. Surah Awf by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When he was asked, Men al Dajjal. Who did Dajjal? He said, Safi ibn Sayyad. And Safi ibn Sayyad is the Antichrist. Kalam al Sayyid Ali bin Abi Talib. Bab Madin al Ilm. The words of whom? Sayyid Umar ibn Khattab. Al Ilm al Ilm. Sahih al Bukhari. Knowledge, knowledge. Umar ibn Khattab. That's in the vision of Sayyid Muhammad ibn Munkadir. That he said that I heard Muhammad ibn Munkadir saying that Jabir ibn Abdullah. Jabir ibn Abdullah, the great companion of the Prophet sallallahu make an oath that Safi ibn Sayyad is the Antichrist. I mean of Akbar, the Antichrist. Not the 30 Antichrists that proceed in a tradition. Not the 70 odd Antichrists that proceed in a tradition. That are manifestation of projections. But the Antichrist. Sayyidina Jabir ibn, ibn Abdullah. Where did Jabir get it from? Jabir al-Anhu wa daughter I got from Umar. And Umar ibn al-Khattab halaf that he made an oath in the presence of the Prophet sallallahu the Safi ibn Sayyad is the Antichrist. And he was not rebuked by Ankara sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Prophet never said, no, you're wrong. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sallam. Who says so? Sahib al-Quran, Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu wa da. He said, it is more beloved for me yani, to make nine oaths, nine oaths, billah. On Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that Ibn Sayyad is the Antichrist, than one that he isn't. Similar statement you hear from Sayyid Abu Dhar al Khifari, who's important, Ashbah the Isa ibn Amariya, as the Prophet Sallallahu says, he's the one who bears the most striking resemblance in reality. In reality, Sayyid Abu Dhar al Khifari. In form, that's whom? Urwa ibn Mas'ud al Thaqafi. But in terms of reality, it's whom? Sayyid Abu Dhar al Khifari. He even. Further than Sayyid Hawun, Sayyid radiallahu ta'ala anhu wa rasi Abdullah bin Mas'ud, he said, I would take ten oaths that he is the Antichrist rather than one that he isn't. But you can go on, Sayyid Abdullah bin Umar ibn Khattab, halaf billah, oath that is the Antichrist, Ibn Sayyid. Sayyid Hawun, Abu Sayyid al Khudri, of the greatest rawis of the Quran, halaf billah, that Ibn Sayyid is the Antichrist. You're dealing with the manifestation of the Antichrist, but the most important of all realities, ma fa'ala shay'an. Yani khalas. The fitan of the Antichrist never manifested. And he's present, but he's completely negated. Why? These are people who are connected to Mustafa. These are Ahlul Fikr, people of remembrance of Allah Ta'ala. These are people of Salah al Nabi, people who are connected to the Messenger of Allah. These are Ahlul Qulu, people of Art, Ahlullah, wa Khasatu, the people of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Look at the claim of Sayyidina Jabir. He said, Radiallahu anhu wa da, the Antichrist manifest. The kids of Medina will stone him out of the city. The kids. <laughs> and the kids of Medina to Manora will kick him right out of the city. Yani, the Rijal of our time would find it difficult. That's why when he manifests, it's all in Sihabad. People back off from the Antichrist. They're going to face the Antichrist. But in that time, the kids could face, stand in front of him, kick him out of the city in and of itself. I mean, you see too many of the Sahaba who face him off. Look at Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Umar. From his father, 
And say Umar ibn Khattab and the Prophet says, goes to Ibn Sayyid and the Hadith al-Bukhari and Muslim. And then the Prophet says to Ibn Sayyid, man, ana. And who am I? Atashat anni Rasulullah. Do you believe that I'm the messenger of God? Because this is the boy who was born at the sifat of the Antichrist. He had the form of the Antichrist, the sifat that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi knew. He had the sifat as it relates to his mother and his father. His father being tall and gangly and his mother being, quote unquote, of large breasts. That's in the tradition in of itself. Sifat. They have no child for 30 years. The sifat. And the Prophet even sent Abu Dhar al-Khifari check when he heard that the boy was born to go and check the boy. And then Khaz Abu Dhar al-Khifari comes back with the affirmative. He has to see fat. And the Prophet says and goes and sees the boy. And then he will see the boy as he grows, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But in, in an instance, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi goes to Sayyidina Umar ibn Khattab. Several instances with Sayyidina Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu. And on one end, the Prophet when he sees him and he says, playing with the other, he's a child now. Playing with child, children in between to Manawara, the Prophet Darabahu smacks him on his back, right up on his back. And then he turns around towards the Prophet The Prophet says, Atashat anni Rasulullah. Do you bear witness that I'm the messenger of Allah? He says, La, no. I don't bear witness that you're the messenger of Allah. And then he says to the Prophet Do you bear witness that I'm the messenger of God? It's a boy. You khatib al Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Do you bear witness I'm the messenger of God? But look at the answer of the Rasul. Amen to Billahi wa bi malaikatihi. I believe in God and His Messenger, and uh, God and His War and His Angels. In another way, I meant to be lahi wa malaikati wa kutubi. I believe in Allah, I believe in the angels of Allah, and in the scriptures, revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What's interesting there is that the Prophet sallallahu doesn't deny him being the messenger of God. That's again what our teachers say. It's not a denial he's being the messenger of God. And so, what's the understanding there? is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has messengers in the world of duality. Just like he has messiahs in the world of duality. So just as we have the Messiah, the Messiah, Jesus, the son of Mary, we have the Messiah and the Dajjal. We have the Antichrist. And just as we have the Rasul, the messenger, we have the anti-messenger. Just so we have the ulama say, Masih al-Huda. We have the Messiah of guidance. We have Masih al-Dalala. We have the Messiah of misguidance. Just we have Rasul al-Huda, who will be ba'ath of the ummiyina. Who will be the of the He is the one who sent amongst the oral ones, the ummiyina, a messenger. In a riwayah, Safi bin Sayyid said to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he asked, oh, do you believe on the messenger of God? He said to the Prophet Sallallahu I believe you're the Rasul of the Ummiyeen. That's the way he uses it. Sahih Muslim. You're just the Rasul of the oral ones. Ah. And he is the one who sent amongst the Ummiyeen a Rasul. That's Rasul al-Huda Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Khatim al-Nabiyeen wa Khatim al-Mursaleen Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But there's also a Rasul of misguidance. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we dispatched our salna. We dispatched demons. We sent demons as rusul. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. The bearers of glad tidings, huda, and bearers, mundirin, of wickedness, of evil, likewise. Do you understand the point? And that's what they mentioned about the issue of Safi bin Sayyid. There's too much clam upon Safi bin Sayyid. The Prophet said, ask him, inni khabbatu laka khabi'an. Look at this way, Sadam. I've hidden something for you. What is it that I've hidden for you? And then he says to the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Duh, Duh. So he said, Duh, Duh. And then the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, said, Ikhsa, be wretched. Lem ta'adu al-qadra. You cannot go beyond the veil. You cannot go beyond your divine boundary. The Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, says. Meaning he's been completely negated, as we'll explain. But look what he said, Duh, Duh. What do you mean by Duh, Duh? You see, playing God, smoke. That's what he means by duch duch, duchan. Uh, that's what he means by duch duch. What did the Prophet hidden for him? Surah to duchan inside of his heart. That's what. And yoma and on the day when the sky comes, bi duchan in mubin, On that day, uh, that was the verse in the heart of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. All this had that the Prophet said, the verse had been written upon his hand. 
Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that verse. And what have I hidden for you? And he said, Duh, Duh. What is that? He accessed the reality of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that which the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam hidden. But then the Prophet understood at that point in time, Khalas, uh, you cannot go be beyond your divine capacity. Uh, you're negated inside of this age. That's Safi bin Sayyid. Look at Abu Sa'id al Khudri. So we get the point. I think that's the most central point about Ibn Sayyid until it manifests in the ages to come. Uh, Saying Abu Sa'id al Khudri, anhu warda, he says he's upon a journey. It's like others. Umar, Umar wanted to kill him. Prophet said, let him be. Because what? If he is who he is, you have no power over him. The Antichrist. And the power is with Jesus, the son of Mary, alayhi salam. Abdullah ibn Umar, the son of Umar ibn Khattab, likewise goes for it. He said, I met him on two occasions, only twice did I engage him. In Sahih Muslim. He said, the second time I engaged him, when I saw him, that his eye now were transmuted into the one eye. From the description of the Antichrist. Okay, that the right eye is completely closed, and the left eye, Tafia, is protruding, it's out, and it's half closed, and it's half, and he's blind. In one eye completely, such that there's a khilaf over it. And it's never been opened, and the second one is open, protruding, but it's difficult for him to see the Antichrist. And that's how Ibn Sayyid turned toward the end of his life. And Abdullah ibn Umar, when he faces him off, Ibn Khattab, in Sahih Muslim, he says, what's happened to your eye? Tell me about your eye. And he says, the eye? He says, if Allah was subhanahu wa ta'ala so wills, this eye will be inside of your staff. Abdullah ibn Umar ibn Khattab, Sunnah al Rasul, he has a staff. He said, this eye will be inside of your staff. Look at the cloud and say, Abdullah. Abdullah says, my friends who are with me claimed, that's what he says, they claimed that I took my staff and smashed it over his head. But me, I don't recollect it, Yanni. All I just looked at my staff, my staff was broken in two. <laughs> in another riwayah, he had a Jewish friend, Sahibi, min al yahud a Jewish friend, Abdullah, Abdullah ibn Umar, said he claimed that I punched him in the chest as well. I beat up Ibn Sayyad. Hekka, that was the second time and the last time Abdullah ibn Umar met him. Abu Sayyid al Khudri, rahimahullah ta'ala, met him on occasions. One, on an occasion of jihad. Another, on an occasion going to Hajj, or it's mentioned Umrah. He's left Medina, going to Mecca to Al-Makarrama. And now, the weird is that he's the Antichrist. And then I say that Abu Sayyid al Khudri says, when we rest upon the way to Mecca to Al-Makarrama, I'm looking, and all people have distanced themselves from him. They say it's just me and him alone. What's the first thought I have? Abu Sayyid al Khudri. I wanted to take a rope, put it around his neck, tie it to a tree, and strangle him. That's the first thing. But he understands, khalas. Khalas, Laysa Abu Sabir. He has no way whatsoever. And so then he says, Ibn Sayyid takes his matar, takes his stuff, and he puts his stuff over mine. I said, Get your stuff off, get it off, take it away, don't put it on my stuff. Then they bring milk. And Ibn Sayyid brings the milk to me to save me. I said, no, 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 yani, khalas, I'm cool, I'm, I'm okay, I don't need no milk to drink. Milk's hot and it's a very hot day, yani. I need something a lot cooler. And then Ibn Sayyid sits and he says to Abu Sa'id al-Khudri, he says, don't you see that people are oppressing me? They can see the meeting with the Antichrist. He says, how can I be the Antichrist? And he, the Prophet said to the Antichrist is a disbeliever. And here I am, I believe in Allah Ta'ala and his messenger. He said, the Prophet ﷺ said, the Antichrist, that he has no children. Look, khalas, you see my children inside Medina to Manawara. How can I be the Antichrist? He said, the Prophet ﷺ, he said that the Antichrist doesn't enter Mac, doesn't enter Medina. Here I am, Kharij. I've just come out of Medina to Manawara. He said, the Prophet ﷺ said that he doesn't enter Mecca to Makarama. Here I am with you, we're on our way to Mecca. <laughs> and he enters Mecca. He said, Abu Sayyid al Khudri is like, my man's got a good point here. Yeah. He's got that good point. And he said, at that point in time, I start feeling sorry for him. That maybe people have got it wrong. And then he says, he turns towards me. He says, Do you want me to tell you where the Antichrist is? Do you want to tell you exactly where he is? And he said, At that point in time, it becomes evident that he begins to speak with the Antichrist. And then he says, A very chilling way where his reality to be offered to me, full transmutation. I would readily accept it. Hadith in the Sahih al Muslim. I would readily embrace it and accept it. And then says Abu Sayyid al Khudri says, Tabben laka, tabbat laka. May you be wretched for the rest of the day. And he class walks from him. He says, Ibn Sayyid, I mean, proofs upon proofs upon proofs. Look at Sayyidina Abu Musa al Ash'ari. Abu Musa al Ash'ari, when they take, they go beyond Khurasan, into the lands of Khurasan. And they, they, 
conquer the lands of Khurasan, from the lands of Aswahan to the lands of Sus. He said, when they get to a land called Sus, a city state called Sus, that the people of the city, they say no. They say that this city cannot be opened except through the Antichrist. That's what our scholars in Abba and Jed and taught us. The only one who we deliver this city to is the Antichrist. What of Abu Musa al-Ash'ari, of those who swore the oath that he's the Antichrist? He then calls into the army and Ibn Sayyad is inside the army. Calls, summons Ibn Sayyad forth. Ibn Sayyad walks forth, he goes to the door of the citadel, kicks down the door, walks into the city, they all raise their hands in celebration of the Antichrist. And the tradition. Look at the opening of Asfahan. Study this in the age of Amr ibn Khattab. Study the opening of these great cities in, in the city of Asfahan. Of those who named Abdul Rahman al Dabi, radiallahu ta'ala anhu warda, who's in the armies of those who conquered the city of Asfahan. I remember the traditions about the final emergence of the Antichrist. Is that's one of the cities that he comes out of in the hadith of Sayyidina Fatah bin Qais. That he comes out of what? The city of Asfahan. And from it will he made 70,000 Jews. Rewire 70,000 magicians who are from the inner circle of the Antichrist himself at the end of time. But the Al-Ikhlas, when they take Aswahan, the Sahaba radiallahu anhu wa da'um, is one of the individuals named on the authority of Hassan ibn Abdul Rahman. He tells his father, Abdul Rahman al dabi radiallahu anhu wa that he hears that they encounter the Sahaba radiallahu anhu wa da'um. And then Aswahan, which is full of Jews, it's a Jewish city, to this day, Jewish city. Who was the president of Israel, came out of the, one of the last presidents of Israel, was Aswahani Jew. And so he, was, he says that he hears the Jews all celebrated. And so he goes to the Jews, he said he knew some of the Jews, he goes to the Jews and says, what is it? They were celebrating, dancing, they're beating the doof. And he says, what's going on? He said, we have news, Ghadem, tomorrow, that khalas, the Antichrist enters. And he said, have news, the Antichrist is going to enter? He says, tomorrow. He says, so bit to Allah, what? He said, bit to. I spent the night upon the roof of his house that night. I want to see what's going to happen. But look at Shuf, for our point, I prayed the entire night. That's what he said. I'm in Salah the entire night. He said the next morning after Fajr, khalas, you hear the Jews begin to celebrate, and there comes whom? Ibn Sayyid. As he enters into what? Into Asfahan, and khalas, he disappears. Let me he never return from that moment on. Okay? Or the riwayah, radiallahu anhu, the hadith of Sayyidina Jabir, radiallahu ta'ala anhu wa ta'ala, that was called the Harra. In our majalis, we spoke about the issue of Sayyidina Abu Huraira, that you bend Rihuna Sittin. Don't allow us to, to reach the Sittin. And he interpreted it as his 60. He personalized it, radiallahu anhu wa ta'ala. And he dies in the year 59 on opinion, 58 on opinion, 57 upon opinion, radiallahu anhu Abu Huraira. But what happened was the most major event in the Sittin, what's called the Harra, of the most major events, the Harra, which is the desecration of Medina al Munawwara on behalf of the forces of Banu Umayyah. Okay, a Muslim in Uqba, the desecration of Medina, till their beasts are urinating and defecating in the mosque of the Prophet and the killing of an untold great number of Sahaba. Saying of whom Jabir radiallahu anhu wa the hadith of Abu Dawood, he said, Faqadna ibn Sayyar fil Harba. That's when he disappeared, Ibn Sayyar. Our point is this is a manifestation of the Antichrist. And the demons, yani, nuqayyib. Ah, shaytan, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. That we will what we will yani, we will designate demons for him. Ah, demons. And that thereby those demons will be controlled by the Antichrist. In flesh and blood, where is he? That's in the hadith in Sahih Muslim. This is the time of the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And it's a hadith once again of the great one Fatim in the case radiallahu ta'ala anha wa da'a, who says that she hears the adhan being called from the mosque of the Prophet. And then the Adhan of Salatu Jami'ah. Salatu Jami'ah is towards the end of the Madani period. Of Salatu Jami'ah. It's like what you hear for like Taraweeh, right? Sometimes you hear that even for Jihad. And so the Sahaba all come out of their houses. What's going on? It's not the time for prayer. But they know it's an issue of importance. But again, just like Sayyidina Abdul Rahman al Dabi, the Prophet leads the companions inside a prayer. What prayer? We don't know. But they pray. And thereafter, the Prophet takes to the member, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then the Prophet says, Ya al-Haq. The of the Rasul, the Prophet is smiling, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That's ahwan. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the khalq al-samawati wal-ard akbar. Min khalq al-insan wa lakin akbar al-nas la ya'alamu. That's one of the verses of the Antichrist. The creation of the heavens and the earth is greater.
created in the creation of man and of a type of man, the Antichrist, at one, is insignificant in reality. But the majority of people don't understand that. I wasn't laughing, that's the issue of the Antichrist. And then the Prophet says, Do you know what makes me smile? And then the Prophet says, Tamim al Dari, radiallahu ta'ala anhu wa ra, saying Tamim al Dari, great companion of the Rasul, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, can a Nasra niya. He was a Christian. And he took to the ocean. Where is he from? He's from Palestine, saying to me. And he takes to the ocean. What's the ocean here? The meaning of it? The Mediterranean. From Palestine into the Mediterranean. He takes into the ocean. In a ship. And this ship has smaller boats to its side. And they sail and they sail and they sail. And then they're caught by waves. And then waves begin to play with them. The Thalathina Yoma. For a month. Or even greater, plays with them, sending them where? Hatta Maghrib Shams. Until they reach the fearless west. the Hadith Sahih Muslim. Hadith Sahih Muslim. And then when they reach the fearless west, that they thereby shipwrecked. They take to the smaller boats and they thereby go towards this jazeera, this island that manifests. And they sail to this island. And when they get to this island, they see this beast. That's the devil. That's the Jesasa. They see this beast. They see this beast was humongous. We couldn't tell its front from its back. In another riwayah, the beast, the devil, feminine. It's a woman. Imra, the way they use Imra. It was a woman. We couldn't tell its front from its back. And then lo and behold, the beast speaks. And they ain't really interested in what the beast is saying. They just are scared as hell of the beast. They just want to get out of it. And then when they ask that way the people who've been shipwrecked, the beast says, you ask me no questions, go to the one inside of this monastery, this daya, the way it uses. They said, we weren't interested in who's in the monastery, we just want to get out of it. So they quickly leave, saying to Tamim al-Dari, radiallahu ta'ala, and whatnot, and they enter into the monastery. And there in the monastery, they see the biggest human being that they've ever seen. That they've ever seen. And that's why so many of them say, Akbar, that when the Prophet says, that the fitna of the Antichrist is Akbar, the greatest since the creation of Adam. Some of the ulama make the qiyas on Sayyidina Adam. That Adam was a being of huge, huge proportion, Sayyidina Adam alayhi salam. And 60 cubits in the hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari. And that the Antichrist is even bigger in size, huge in size. And they see the biggest human being that we've ever seen, and that his hands are chained, supremely chained to his neck, so that he can't move. Types of chains that they've never seen. And then they begin to address the human being that were, were the people from the Palestine region and they tell him what has occurred and how they landed upon the island, what's our way out? And he said, you're from the Palestine region. He says, tell me about Nakhlatul Baysan. Tell me about the, the day palm trees of Baysan. Tell me about them. Do they still bear fruits? Do they still give fruit? Do they still bear dates? They said, yeah, they still bear dates. He says, khalas, soon they won't. He says, tell me about Lake of Tabariya. Tell me about the actual, the lake of Tabari, the Tabari Lake. Tell me about it. Does it still have water? He said, yeah, it's got plenty of water. He said, soon not a single drop will be there. He said, tell me about what? Ain Zuhar. Tell me about the, the, the spring well of Zuhar. And Khalas, does water come forth from that fountain, from that spring? He said, yes, water's still there. He said, soon it won't. And no, those three, all of them are ecological. Things that are due to connect to the natural environment. Then he said, Tell me about a Nabi al Ummi. That's the way they use it. Tell me about the Nabi al Ummi, the oral prophet. And Bu'if, has he manifested? He said, Yes, he's manifested in Arabia. He said, What's his affair? He said, His affair is harb, it's war. He said, With his people, with the Arabs? He said, Yeah, with the Arabs. He said, Men harb. And khalas, what is the kid? Who's victorious? He said, khalas, he was victorious. He's locked down Arabia. And then he says, I am the Antichrist, the Messiah the Jab. I'm based upon what you have told me, which doesn't relate to the day palm tree, because it's full of water. It doesn't relate to the lake of Tabaria. The day palm is full of dates. Not Lake Tabaria, it's full of water. Ain al Zuhar, full of water. But it relates to Nabi al Arabi, Nabi al Ummi, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. That now, the 
permission is going to be granted for me now to have final manifestation. One of the things that's important inside of the Antichrist is that he's more folk, that he's completely chained. And the relevant our teachers have it in transmission, that is only for the age of the Prophet. Okay? So of his colonizations is of the form of Ibn Sayyab. But it can't become full because he's chained, restricted upon the island in and of itself. And thereafter, upon the death of the Rasul, that's why he's the first and the greatest Musiba, the death of the Prophet in Fikak, that the chains of the Antichrist upon his island, khalas, he's been released. And now we see it beginning to reach what? The yeah, 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 critical mass. I that the Antichrist, whether it's the 30 Antichrist in the Riwayah, manifestations, or the 70 Antichrist in the Riwayah, 70 out of the Prophet says, that they have happened since the death of the Rasul. Until it becomes more and more and more intense, until you see his final emergence, his final manifestation. And Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, khalas. And he never does evil manifest, save that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prepares us for it. Okay? And tribulations inside of our day and age of the things the Prophet has informed us how to protect ourselves from the Antichrist, if the moment comes, will be face off from him, is a surah. Surah to Kahf. And it's sort of a litmus test for us, if not as it's gone before, but from this moment onwards. Do we recite Surah to Kahf upon a Friday? If we don't recite it this Friday, the Friday after, the Friday after, it's Kalam. All of this is Kalam. It's of no avail. It's just mere entertainment. It's not guidance, Huda, from Rasul al Huda, sallallahu alayhi wa Because the nature of guidance, it transputes. It transforms the form, transforms the soul into those that are proximate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And look, shuf, look, look, you're on Kalam of the Rasul, three verses from Surah al kahf That's a tradition. Five verses. Words of the Rasul. Five verses in the beginning. That's a tradition of saying Abu Darda. Ten verses in the beginning. Yani khalas. Ten verses in the end. The Prophet said, if you face off the Antichrist, iqra alayhi for wajah Surah al-Kahf. If you face off on the Antichrist, just recite to the Antichrist, the beginning of Surah Al-Kaf, khalas, mana'a, you're protected. The highest degree, the entire Surah Al-Kaf from beginning to end. But asrar of Surah Al-Kaf, what Surah Al-Kaf about? Fitan, tribulations Surah Al-Kaf. Four tribulations in the four narratives inside of Surah Al-Kaf. The first and the most important, which is fawatih, in the beginning of Surah Al-Kaf, is the fitna of what? Iman, faith, is the fitna of Ashab al Kaf for themselves. Yeah. It's the fitna of faith, the tribulation of faith, that you will be stripped of faith in that age. And if you want, you want to be saved in that age, you have to back off. You can't engage. You can't engage the Antichrist. That's why they take flight. Even the Mahdi himself takes flight. There's only one being who can face off with them, and that's whom Jesus is on the Mary alayhi salam. So you've got to take protection. Where? Medina to Manawara. Antichrist don't enter, can't enter Medina in final manifestation. You gotta enter Mecca to Mukarrama, Mecca, Khalas. Antichrist can't enter Mecca to Medina. Secured. Secured by the angels of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mecca secured by whom? Mikhail. Mikhail descends to protect what? Mecca from the Antichrist. And when the Antichrist approaches Mecca, he finds Mikhail, the archangel Mikhail protecting it. Khalas. A being of the unseen. Basar too. I saw that which they never saw. That's his words. Uh, you have Medina to Manawara. And khalas. Sorted Medina. Who protects Medina? Sahib al Medina. But from the angelic realm, men, Gabriel. It's Gabriel protecting the city of the Prophet, the Supreme Angel. From the Delils, that is the Supreme City, Medina to Manawara. There is not only Gabriel, but upon all the seven pathways to Medina to Manawara, you have two other angels besides Gabriel, with swords and sheep. And the answer is, you're sick. Basar too. I see that which they did not see. And so he goes to his natural habitat, which is the swamps, huh? the swamps of Medina. Now people are trying to fool you that it's a palace, huh? the palace of King Fahd. They're trying to fool you that it's a palace. That ain't no palace. But the Antichrist knows a palace. That's what he says. Whose is the white palace? When he stands up on the swamp. Whose is the white palace? He says, Qasr Ahmed. Uh, and look at the word Ahmed. The unseen reality of the Rasul. Is, that's Ahmadiyah, the messenger of Allah. And he speaks about the unseen reality. That's Qasr Ahmed. And, he, and 
The mosque is a qasab now. The mosque has never looked like that. And in the time of what? Of the Prophet Sallallahu it was more day palm trees, brown. Time of Abu Bakr, brown and day palm trees. Time of Sayyidina Umar, brown. Uthman ibn Affan builds into stone, becomes black. The mosque of the Prophet had black stone. Uthman ibn Affan remains that way up until the era of the Fatimids. Then it becomes brown once again. Huh? The era of the Uthmanim, Banu Uthman, the Ottomans, it's brown. It's only in the, in the era of these people that has become a white palace. White. Just looks like a palace. Not only white, you know, scientifically, sure, scientifically, it's the most brightest place on planet Earth. Right. Confirmed in science, when you look at the air, the brightest spot upon Earth is the mosque of the Prophet. That's bright and light. That's the message. You can't enter Medina to Manoa to be Antichrist. Huh? You, you gotta take refuge. You can't enter Jerusalem, the capital city of the Mahdi himself. Can't enter Jerusalem. You gotta take refuge in Jerusalem. Riwayah, you can't enter Nejran. Nejran between the Yemen and what and what is called Saudi Arabia today, the Nej. Huh? Can't enter what Nejran, a Riwayah. Tur, Mount Tur. Take to the mountains. You can't enter Tur. I mean, class. Where else? The Bawadi, the mountains and the deserts, wilderness. Take residency in there. Huh? He can't enter them. Or not that he can't, but he doesn't. He's too busy with quote unquote civilization, quote unquote the Antichrist. But the point is, you have to remove yourself from his presence. Okay? In the age of his final emergence, the age of the Infikak. Yani, his emergence is out of where? And this in our Durus, we spoke about the Mahdi. The Durus of the Mahdi, he, he, that's the age in which he emerges. And the Mahdi is where? The Mahdi is in Constantinople. And that's the Ghadab. I say to Abdullah ibn Umar, on one occasion, when he, the occasion where he smacks Ibn Sayyad, he goes and tells his sister Hafsa Umm al -Mu'minin. She says, what are you doing? Hafsa says, don't you know that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that the, Mah, that the Antichrist emerges ala shayin yuhdibuhu, due to something that enrages him. That, that, Grips him in anger. It's through anger that he emerges. Don't vex because you'll see final manifestation. Hafsa says to her brother, Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Umar. What is the thing that enrages him in the hadith? The opening of Constantinople. Okay? And when Constantinople falls, that is the manifestation of the Antichrist. Okay? His first manifestation. And as soon as it falls, the first way that reach the, the, the Mahdi is that now he's manifested. The Antichrist is manifested. And they send the army down to Sham down to the level, to Damascus and to Jerusalem. And they find that Antichrist is not there. But in the tradition, that's his first emergence. He manifests in Sham, then he disappears. And then the Prophet says, Ala ithri hadha. Immediately after that, you'll see a manifest, the Antichrist. In another riwayah, when the Medina, Kharab al-Medina, Tukhrab al-Medina, when the city Tukhrab, Medina, Tukhrab, that's the manifestation of the Antichrist. Okay? Another riwayah, Qatir. That when Qatir, which we explained, is what's left the remnants of America, khalas. Yani when that yani is open, liberated, that's the manifestation of the Antichrist. And that's how you interpret Medina. That Medina doesn't mean Medina to Menorah, but Medina means Medina to Qatir. That when that is liberated by the Antichrist, which is immediately after Constantinople, then you see the final manifestation of the Antichrist. Images from where? Multiple traditions, which again, these are issues of spirit, omnipresent of spirit, that manifest or born in Egypt, his final emergence. Traditions, sound that he comes out of Asfahan, in a place called Rastakbad, inside of Asfahan in and of itself. That's traditions. Traditions, he comes out of a place called Maru. Maru. It's called Mev in our, in our day and age. Traditions that he comes out of a place called Kufa. Kufa. Where is that? Babel, Iraq. And that's where his emergency comes out of. And his emergence initially, it's, it's good. The Prophet tells us that his final emergence, he's going to preach Deen. He's Jewish. And he's Yahud. That's the tradition. But, khalas, he's going to preach the Deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Until eventually, where does he take control of? As a good man, quote unquote, Kufa. The southern city of Iraq, Kufa. He takes control of Kufa. And the Prophet said he will rule Kufa with righteousness for two years. Until people are going to consider him to be a righteous man. And he rules Kufa. And then you see what's called Istidraj. As Allah Ta'ala says, 
we shall take them in degrees from where they perceive not. Um leave our home, and we will lower down the rope of deception to them. In the KD Mateen. Verily, my stratagem is fair, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. Because from righteousness, he declares now he's a prophet. Okay? And those who oppose him, kill for the very few inside of Kufa. He declares he's a prophet. And the Prophet doesn't Muslim know who the last prophet is. And so people who have faith inside of their heart, they remove themselves from his presence. And then thereafter, he's going to begin to declare that he's God. I am the Lord of the worlds. And that's what he says. I am the Lord of the world. And at that point, you see the transmutation of his face. That's where you see the eye close, and then you see the eye protrude. That's where you see the hair move out, and then that's where you see the body. The hands become mushawa, like long hand, short hand, short fingers. That's when you see the legs, likewise, odd legs of the Antichrist. That's when you see a changing in color. Now the Antichrist in Rewires, he's described as the prophesied them, Abiyadul Amhat, like Northern European of complexion. In Rewires, Ahmad, that is reddish, ruddy complexion. In Rewires, Adam, that is dark in complexion, three different complexions. Again, that, when somebody has that type of property, that's the issue of the spirit. That spirit group and form, the ability to transmute form, even in complexion in and of itself. Okay? But there's a transmutation at that point in time. And it's at that point his wickedness begins. His wickedness. And the khawarik begin. The suspensions of the norm likewise are going to begin at that point in time. You see from the khawarik that now the Prophet says there's not a single city upon the face of the earth. Village upon the face of the earth. Qadiyah. Hamlet upon the face of the earth. Any inhabited place upon the face of the earth save that within a 40 day period Yaqabuha. That he's, he's going to step foot upon him. The Antichrist. Step foot upon him. On a beast that is hairy, that the Prophet said, this is the Baratul Rih. Okay? It's the Baratul Saha. That it's what? It's a wind, or that it's, it's a cloud, a wind that leaves behind clouds. Like it moves like the wind, the beast. The Prophet describes it as a donkey, and another way describes it as a mule. That he rides upon. That between his two ears is 40 cubits, the Prophet says. And we can speculate all we want that that's airplanes. We have no airplane that we know of that what uh, that fast can travel at that speed. I mean, the fastest they've got now is what is at the speed of sound. That's what they've got. What is it? London to Japan in two hours. That's what they say. That it has to go outside of the sphere and then goes to Japan in two hours. They've got the technology for it. That's what they declare. But it's faster than that. It doesn't describe the speed of it, just like the speed of the barak in this blessed one. The, the, the mystical beast of the prophecy that it places its hoof upon the horizon. That's the speed of it. Such that it can now go to each and every single place upon planet Earth in the like a 40 day period with the Antichrist upon it. Just in order to subjugate people to his belief that he's the Antichrist, that he's God in and of himself. But look at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah assists us. If you're not in the army of the Mahdi, or you haven't got the good sense to go to one of the aforementioned places to remove yourself from his presence, then what happens? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends in front of the Mahdi to each and every single place. A woman, the Prophet says. And that woman, her name is Tayyibah. Tayyibah, that's the name of the woman. And then the woman comes to warn. She said, the man is about to approach. Fahvaru. Be careful of him. He's about to approach the man. She, yeah, she warns everybody about the approachment of the Antichrist. Meaning, you, you have time to remove yourself from the city before he arrives. And likewise, in the tradition, Allah Ta'ala sends two angels. Who initially in Kufa are with the Antichrist. When the Antichrist declares that he's God. Two angels descend, descend, and they transmute into the form of Ilyas and Yasak, the two prophets. They take on the form of these two mighty prophets. Okay? And then the first prophet, when the Antichrist says, I am God, the first of them, the angel says, Kadabta, you are a liar. But those who are present, Mabosam, they didn't see, they didn't hear, they don't hear the articulation of the angel. And then the second angel who speaks, he says, Sadakta, you've spoken the truth. Speaking to the other angel, yeah, he's a liar. But people only hear the word, Sadakta, you've spoken the truth. And then they believe he's corroborating the claim of the Antichrist that what? That he's God. Vitna. And so what then do you do? But then those two angels go just like the woman, ahead of the Antichrist to every city, and warn every single city that the Antichrist is approaching. And who listens and who doesn't? Fitan that the Prophet says it's khawarik, that his hand 
He can send them into the heavens. And he can bring down rain from the heavens. And that's important. Because the three years prior to the manifestation of the Antichrist, the Prophet says in year one that the heavens withholds one third of its rain. And the earth withholds one third of its vegetation. Year two, the heaven withholds two thirds of its rain. And the earth withholds two thirds of its vegetation. Year three, the heavens withholds all of its rain. Prophet said not a single drop falls in year three in the entire year. The entire earth. And the earth withholds one, yeah, its entire vegetation. I mean, look at women. One of, one of them, the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anha wardaha, she says to the Rasul, she's hearing the tradition. She, it's in her house, he's saying the tradition, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. She says, Ya Rasulullah, she's making bread. She's kneading the dough. And she's like, Ya Rasulullah, we have dough, we have bread we can eat. Ma yakfihim yawma idhin. How will they survive upon that day? What does the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said? The dhikr, dhikr, a tasbih, with tahleel, with takbir. That's how they survive. Spiritual people are through Subhanallah, through Allahu Akbar, through La ilaha illallah, Qut al Qulub. That's how they survive. Yani if you, as they say, dhulq, ashab dhulq, if you don't taste dhikr, now how are you going to taste it then? Remember the day that khalas. Lem takun amalat min qabl. It's not going to benefit you if you haven't believed prior to it on that day. If you don't know how to sustain yourself through the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this one of the most important advices we give that we have to become dhakirin. Dhakirin Allah kathira wa dhakirat as Allah ta'ala says. We have to become male and female people who make much remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that our souls become alive and our souls become fortified. We have to become those type of people. I and mean, this affair is not a simple affair. It's not a simple affair. And so then when he comes and there's no rain and there's no vegetation and the Prophet said every single, the animals would die upon the face of the earth, then he's the one who raises his hands to the sky and brings rain from the sky. He's the one who sends his hand not only into the earth and brings forth vegetation, but he sends his hand into the sea it doesn't reach the, water, the bed of the ocean, but it reaches the ocean, the depths of the ocean, the Prophet Sallallahu says, and he can bring out any of the inhabitants of the sea that he wants, fish. He can fish with his hands and feed people. That's why our teachers say, and look, and in people, that they're going to be misguided by the Antichrist because of look, Aish, because of food. And that's the themes of Surah Al-Kaf. In, in the themes of Surah Al-Kaf, there are four fitan. The first and the most important is the fitna of deen. That's the first narrative. The second of them is the fitna of food, vegetation. That's the second fitna. The third fitna is the fitna of knowledge, of ilm. And the fourth fitna is the fitna of hukam. Of hukam. They are the four. Governance, rule. They are the four tribulations inside the Surah Al-Kaf. And it's those, if we succumb to them, I were not people of tawheed, 45. We're not people of spirituality, 45. So stop. Yeah, it's not an issue of food. We're not people of war who are fortified by knowledge. Yeah, that which manifests up in the age doesn't allow us to lose confidence in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's people. Okay? Like, like Moses questioning Khidr. That's the third narrative. No, khalas, we know above everyone who has knowledge, someone who's more knowledgeable. And then the last, the fitting of Dhul Qarnayn and Gog and Magog and Juj and which is the fitna of hukam, of governance in and of itself. Okay? Because that's where we are sent to strain the age of Antichrist. By ulama, as the Prophet Sallallahu said, it's not the Dajjal that I fear for you. But I fear for you, ulama asu. I fear for you scholars who are evil, who misguide Dal wa Mudil, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi has said. They are misguided and they misguide. That's one of the ways we deviate. And the second way we deviate, hukam, rulers, a polity. يعني لا طاعة لمخلوق مع معصية الخالق that there's no obedience to Creator when it constitutes disobedience to the Creator. There's no obedience to creation when it constitutes disobedience to the Creator in and of Himself. Okay, so we fortify ourselves from all of these tribulations in and of themselves. Now, 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 we fortify ourselves in the tradition of the what the Antichrist manifests in the year 80, in the 18, in the, in the, in the, in the eighth decade. That's that's it, huh? Eh? That he manifests. What time does one have left if it's the 8th decade of this century, the century of the 1500 of the Muslims? 
And what time do you have left in order to prepare yourself for it? A shovel fits in a young tiger. Then when he's bringing rain out of the skies and vegetation out of air and beasts from what? From inside of air. When he brings you Jannah or not, I'm your Lord. Here's paradise and here's hell. What type of faith do you have when the Prophet Sallallahu says, when he shows you paradise and hell, jump into hell. Yeah, I mean, if, if man shows you hellfire, never mind hellfire, man shows you fire, would you jump into fire? Would you jump into, would you listen to a man who, who tells you to jump into fire? Look at the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Sahaba Radhi Allah Anhu Wa The Sahaba who's appointed as an Amir, huh? he's appointed as an Amir, send on the sorti. And then he said, I'm your Amir, right? I'm the boss, right? I'm boss. He says, you have to obey me. You know what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said? So what does he say, Khalas? Light a fire. So he light a fire. He said, right, because I'm boss, I'm the leader, everyone jump into the fire. Everyone jump into the fire. And look at the Sahaba, Radhi Allah Anhu Wa Half of the Sahaba who are with them go to jump into the fire. They go to jump into the fire. The other half, khalas, they're fighting with those who want to jump into the fire. Oh, look at the Sahaba. Of those who want to obey, those who want to disobey. And then, what did he say? Oh, just test me, it's the only messer. <laughs> That's what he said. Then when they go back to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, had they entered that fire, they would have been in it eternally. That's what he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Because there's no obedience to creation when it constitutes disobedience to the Creator. That time, the Prophet is commanding you to jump into fire. Kalam will stop it. Jump into it. Which one of us will? You're going to be like Ashab al huh? You're going to jump into fire. Like Ashab al Khdud inside the Quran, Surah al Burush. Who jump into fire, they jump into it. And the greatest believers. You're going to do that? Which one of us have that type of faith that we will jump into fire in the belief that we see in paradise in front of us? And of the most difficult thing the Rasul says, it is fire until you are completely submerged in it. Yeah, you like, ah! Oh, 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 This ain't bad after all. But in the beginning it's, ah! I mean, you're touching it, it's fire. And in paradise, you're like, paradise? Wow! You see, in paradise, you're like, this really is Jannah. This is paradise. Until the Prophet you jump right into it, then khalas, you're in the midst of hellfire. In another way, it's a river. Huh? That when you submerge yourself into it, khalas, that when it becomes paradise, if it's fire, and it becomes fire, if it's paradise manifest. Yeah, the illusions of the Antichrist, huh? how he can make us believe that. And the Antichrist said of himself. Yeah, the, yeah, the, the, the miracles that he manifests, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi said, you've heard the record that they just bewildered the intellect in of itself. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to render us safe, inshallah, tabarakallah. And in conclusion, inshallah ta'ala, that the Antichrist thereafter, that's the, the emergence of whom? Of Sayyidina Isa ibn Maryam alayhi salam. That the rule of the Antichrist is 40 days. But just like he can play with human beings, with forms, and he can play with the jinn, and he can play with space so that he can travel in 40 days the entire year, and he can also play with that which is inside the space, give you paradise, give you hell, give you a volcano of fire, a mountain of fire, give you a volcano of food, can manifest all of that. He can, yeah, he, malleable for him is things that are inside the space, likewise with time. Because in the Riwayah, he's going to rule for 40 days. In the Hadith in Tirmidhi, 40 days. The Prophet Sallallahu said, one day like a year, then another day like a month, then another day like a Jum'ah, which means a week, and then another day like these days of yours, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says. In Hadith in Ibn Majah, 40 years, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says. He said, one year like half a year. Uh, another year like a month, another year like a week, Another year, like, and then the rest of the years are like, you know, fire. When you light fire, all that flickering, like that. How time will move. Okay? When Antichrist says, Anna Rabbul Alameen, I'm the Lord of the world. You want me to prove I'm the Lord of the world? He says, watch. And he takes control of the sun. Until he makes a day, a week, and a week, a year. You get the point? He elongates time. Then he says, watch. He regresses the sun. And then he makes a day, an hour moves faster. Playing with time. At what age are you? When a man's there playing with time in front of you. And Allah Ta'ala, you can quote the hadith. In Ibn Adam is so buddha. Human being abuses time. Wa inni daha and I am time. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahib wa sallam says. And now it's time. Maghrib, inshallah, we have to move to salah. Inshallah, tabarakallah. Antichrist killed by the son of Mary alayhi salam. Ba'blood, as we discussed. Uh, that's the end of his affair. Inshallah, amal. 
And to show you the end of his affair. And it's not manifestation. Jesus, why? By blood. With his what? With his halibut. With his spear. He shows you the blood of the Antichrist. But you're going to contemplate, why does he show you the blood? And that's it. It's finished. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sallam. بسم الله صلى الله عليه وسلم محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم رب إشرحي صدري وسلامي أحلل عقدة لسان الفطور نويت تعلم تعليم وتذكر تذكير ونفع انتفاع وإفادة والاستفادة والحاف على التمسك بكتاب الله وبسنة الرسول صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ودعاء الهدى ودلالة على الخير اتغاء وشيناء ومرضاتي وقربي وطواكي سبحانه وتعالى This question is how do we explain the Dajjal having planes and technology with the opinion that technology will be destroyed. And it's not a single tradition that says that the Prophet وسلم, he said that the Dajjal would have planes and technology. Okay, it's not a tradition which says that. And so again, the basis of the Antichrist, the base of the Antichrist as it relates to the emergence of the end of time, it's from the world of the Ghaib, the Ghaibiyah, the world of the unseen. Yeah, yeah. And as a rule in the world of the unseen, although theologically it's more so applies to the issue of death, life after death, resurrection, etc. That al-zahiri, that you leave it upon the literal. I know, like quote unquote, many inside of our age, that they take the hadith of the Antichrist in particular, and they want to find some type of parallel in terms of the age in which we live in. And there's no doubt that uh, things in the age in which we live in, that they are realities, quote-unquote, or projections thereof, right, of evil that paved the way for the Antichrist. But it doesn't necessarily mean this is the age of the Antichrist, meaning that what we experience now, as an example, technology and planes, is that which is going to exist, yani, when the Antichrist manifests, because prior to the man manifestation of the Antichrist, is severe trials and tribulations, ayyam al-Mahdi, age of the Mahdi. Okay, so it, uh, the age of the Antichrist, we want to a better phrase, in its brevity, remember, it's, been, it's only going to be 40 days, although there is what, there is a, a shifting of time, our experience of time that manifests at the hand of the Antichrist, but it's not necessarily what occurred prior, okay, uh, so I think we should be careful of that, okay, really should be careful of it. Uh, Kalam of the Rasul, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and that's uh, the way to the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they're not subject to doubt, nor are they subject to error. Okay, and one leaving it in the most literal uh, manifestation is probably the most safest in that regard. Otherwise, it's as if it's too fantastic for us. And, like it's too fantastic for like human beings yeah, to be of that size. It's too fantastic uh, for us. Because we, we human beings have to be the size that we see them. Okay, it's too fantastic for the Antichrist to ride literally a donkey. And it's too, uh, that's too fantastic for us. Like, the donkey has to be metaphor. Because we were trying to understand it, not necessarily the case. And it, maybe it is metaphor, but safety lies and leaving it upon the literal in and of itself. Okay, that's also what we could mention up at that point in time. Because at that point in time, then what's the barak? What are you going to say about the barak itself, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? The barak was a plane. It was a 747 or something. The barak that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam took in this blessed month on the 27th of Rajab on that blessed night that he took Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam from Mecca to Medina to Munawara. I couldn't have been a beast that had a human face, etc., and had the body of an animal, the hooves of a cow, and what have you now. It couldn't have meant that all of that is metaphor. Okay? And at that point, sometimes you begin you get to a point where you begin to explain away religion. And you explain away religion by virtue of the weakness of your own faith. I remember the affair, Ahan, and it is the affair of Ahan, this is an affair of the strength of faith. The strength of faith. That's what we're speaking about here. Okay? As, as alluded at the end of the question, that there's an opinion that technology will be destroyed. And that's an opinion, we've heard that from our teachers. There's an opinion that before the age of the Antichrist, that there's a presupposition, not just the Antichrist, the Mahdi himself, that there will be destruction of te technology in and of itself. And no doubt the age of the technopoly in and of itself, it must come to an end. And it has to come to an end. I mean, the issue of peak oil in and of itself is one of the things that will bring the civilization, as we experience it, to a radical close. That's just the issue of peak oil, and that peak oil is a reality in and of itself. And so we shouldn't get comfortable in the world in which we live from perspective. Huh? Since we don't know whether technology will exist, should we learn to use modern weapons, as well as archery and swords? And you learn to use the sword of the heart, the sword of the spirit. That's ultimately the affair. And the affair of that age is an inward affair, it's a spiritual affair in and of itself. And so and you can be as King Kong as you want, 
If you're not spiritually fortified upon that day, then all it says is that you will ultimately, with all of your modern technology, quote unquote, if that age is an age of technology, you'll find yourself in the army of the Antichrist himself, as do many of the Muslims themselves. And those who are made mention uh, by the Imam Radiallahu Anhu Safarini, those who are, who obtain, who accuse Sunnah of being bid'ah, and they now project bid'ah as being law. Uh, they manifest the different manifestation of the Antichrist himself in the time of the Prophet Sallallahu influenced by him. And that is the likes of Dhul Khuwaysara or Al Hulqas, likewise, who manifest those ones who are trying to take the prophets out of the task. Idal Ya Muhammad. Be just, O Muhammad. This what you've given, let to read be Allah. That you don't want by a God. You're not sincere. You tell him the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you're not sincere. I mean, that's like if you say, yeah, tell him the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, no, I don't believe you're the messenger of God. Do you believe I'm the messenger of God? How do you tell that to the Rasul? The Prophet If I'm not just, then who's just? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said. But from the reality of this being, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, will come people. And that's people that we've seen in each and every single age. Abdul Ghani Dhul Khawaisa, who is one of the fathers of them in the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi in the tradition that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi commands for him to be killed. He was not killed in the age of the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam dispatches Abu Bakr, Abu Bakr doesn't kill him, Radha Ali Wadda. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam dispatches Umar ibn Khattab, Umar ibn Khattab doesn't kill him. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam dispatches Sayyidina Ali ibn Abi Talib. Ali ibn Abi Talib doesn't find him. Huh? Until when? Sufim, in the age of Sayyidina Ali ibn Abi Talib, when he stands up on the battlefield against Ali ibn Abi Talib, accusing Ali ibn Abi, Ta ibn Abi Talib of kufr, of disbelief. And when they go to battle, he's vanquished. Uh, he's vanquished. And Sayyidina Ali ibn Abi Talib dispatches Sayyidina Hassan, and Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Jafar, I want body recognition, bring me his body. And they search for his body, and initially they can't find his body on the battlefield. And this Duk Khawaisa. We'll get to the point, huh? And then what? Well, then they eventually find his body and they show his body to Sayyidina Ali ibn Abi Talib. And Ali ibn Talib swears that the Prophet commanded for his being to be killed. And 70 companions of the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam corroborated the issue of Sayyidina Ali ibn Abi Talib. What's the point? Those people up until the age in which we live, up until the age of the Antichrist. Because when Sayyidina Ali ibn Abi Talib fought them, when they asked them, is this the last of them? We finished them, it's finished. He says no. The last of them will manifest in the army of the Antichrist himself, Sayyidina Ali ibn Abi Talib. It's the age in which we live in. And those people have the Haramain, those people. Yeah, in, in the end, or in the wars, or at the end of time, will Muslim jinn be on the battlefield? I also hear trees will help can you expand upon this. Allah Ta'ala Alam, anywhere the Muslim jinn will be on the battlefield. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala Alam. And we don't even really get traditions of Muslim jinn being on the battlefield with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Okay, and what we're more concerned about is what is Malaika. And angels will descend in that time. Okay, it's an age of spirit. So angels will descend. And likewise, the great one, the son of Mary, alayhi salam, who's greater than the angels. That's Ibn Maryam, alayhi salam, Jesus, the son of Mary. And he descends as we learned inside of Damascus, and he meets the forces of the Mahdi, who will be surrounded by the force of the Antichrist in Jerusalem. And then Jesus then will lead the force of the Mahdi against the last Malhama. It's the last great war. And the Prophet said after the Malhamat of Dajjal, after the great war of the Antichrist, there's no more Malahim. There's no more great wars. That's the final great war. You have the three Malahim. The three Malahim. You have three great wars. The Prophet said in the age of the Mahdi. The last one called Malhamat al Kubra, which is the supreme great war when the forces of Rome face, face off against the actual forces of war of the Mahdi and of himself. That's called Malhamat al Kubra. After that Malhamat of Rum, such as the Zun, as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, you will declare war on Constantinia, upon Constantinople, Istanbul, and Allah will grant you victory, from which is to the Zun and Masih al Dajjal. Then you will go to war against the Antichrist. That's the final Malhamat. But it's not from the three Malahim. It's an independent Malhamat. Malhamat means great war, a great war, a seismic war. That's the last of them on the face of planet Earth. Thereafter, not even Gog and Magog is their war. But Jesus on the Great Night Islam, as we learned, Khalas just takes them on tour. He's not going to face off with Gog and Magog. Although he faces off with the Antichrist, kills him at Babel Lud, as we have said uh, at Babel Lud. And, and the issue of the trees, well, that's the issue of, of, of after the defeat of the, after the killing of the Antichrist, then those who were the Antichrist, they begin to disappear. They all seek to go into the world of the unseen. And of the things of the Antichrist, the Antichrist, as we mentioned, demons. And he colonizes 
You have the human beings when it's through demons, the manifestation of demons. And that's one of the, the, the manifestations of this issue of ihya and imata, of life and death. Because he claims, ana, ana uhyi wa umit. I give life and I give death. And the Antichrist comes out of the same city as Nimrod, who says that in the Quran, comes out of Babel. I give life and I give death, the Antichrist says. And from amongst them, you ask people, Bedouins. You see Bedouins. You see likewise women. You ask them, who do you want to be revived? Men, women. Who do you want to be revived? They say, what, my father? And then you'll stand over the grave. And he Kum. He addresses the grave. The grave opens. And then you see, they see who they believe to be their father, or their mother, or their brother, or their son, and all their revivals, all coming out of their grave one by one. And the resurrection on behalf of the Antichrist. Although the Prophet has informed us that it's a devil who has assumed the form of the father, assumed the form of the mother. Okay, that's the point of the Antichrist, assumed the form of the son. And wonder why the Prophet speaks of the woman who the Antichrist re revives the entire family. He says she goes home and she sleeps with devils, with demons. She spends the night with demons in the belief that it's one, that this is her own family who's been resurrected by the Antichrist. Okay, what's the point is that when Isa and Maria kills the Antichrist, all of those demons just completely disappear, vanish into thin air. So you and somebody you think is your father that just disappears into thin air. Somebody you think is your mother disappears into thin air. <laughs> the hadith of the Bedouin, the Bedouin, Antichrist asks him, what do you want me to revive? He says, my camels. <laughs> camels, the Bedouin, he wants camels. Antichrist has camels it is. Even demons are going to take the form of camels. But when the Antichrist is killed, all of those demons disappear. Okay? But then there are people alongside the Antichrist who are not demons. And what I mean from the jinn, from the sprite world. But they're demons from the human world. And from amongst them in that age, from the children of Banu Israel, the Jews. And so when the Antichrist is killed, they seek to hide. But there's every single tree, and that's the question being asked is now going to begin to command, Ya Abdullah, scream, Ya Abdullah, O son of O slave of God, behind me is a Jew who seeketh to hide. Because now the forces of the Mahdi are now looking for those who are in the army of the Antichrist. Except one single tree, the Ghadqat, the Prophet Sallallahu said, that tree, Khalas al okay, that's a tree that will protect Banu Israel in that age, after the disappearance of the Mahdi. Okay. And can you please describe the beast at the end of time? What does it look like? How big is it? That's the dead back, the beast. And as we said, Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Amr ibn Ras, he's of the opinion that the beast, the dead back, is the jasasa. It is one of the same. And don't be confused about the jasasa, it's like a spy vehicle or the spy beast of the Antichrist. That's what jasasa means, like a spy. But that beast that Tamim al Dali met upon the actual island, you see, that's why, you know, subhanAllah, like sometimes, you engage a being, and you believe this being yani, has ill intent for you. Only for you to go to a being who has real ill intent for you. So the beast sends it to the Antichrist. But that beast is a good beast, not evil. Not evil, that beast is a good beast. And that beast is placed with the Antichrist as a Nasih, as the one who advises the Antichrist. That's why the Hujj is against the Antichrist. And the Hujj is not just from the prophets themselves, as the Prophet says, that there's not a single prophet save that he's warned his people of the Antichrist. But I'm going to tell you something about the Antichrist that none of the prophets have ever told their people. And that is one eye. And your Lord is not one eye. I know that the symbol of the one eye in our day and age has dominance. It's a dominance. Everywhere you look, you see the one eye. It's frightening the one eye. Even over the Haram of Mecca, the Haram of Medina. And he quotes a book guarded by the one eye. That's the age in which we live in, okay? Okay, but here we're not speaking, that's, it's not the issue of metaphor, that's what he means by one eye. The Antichrist literally has one eye that he barely sees through, huh? Make sure you understand it in the most literal, in the most literal sense. Okay, so the beast is good and it's an asset. It advises the Antichrist. And then, khalas, yeah, upon the, the effect of the Quyud, when the Antichrist is released, that beast disappears. Psh, disappears. The beast, the death, the assassin. 
and that beast will not re-emerge until, until the very end of time. And it's the second of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Hadith in of the verse in, in Surah Al-An'am, where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said, it's the second thing, when that beast manifests, khalas, nobody's going to be what? Nobody's going to be saved. And after that point, and in fact, the doors are being closed. If you haven't believed, men will as Allah Ta'ala says, prior to that point in time. Okay, but the beast, it's mentioned that the beast is going to carry the actual ring of Solomon, the ring of Suleiman alayhi salam. Okay, and the ring of Suleiman, upon, inscribed upon the ring of Suleiman is La ilaha illa ana, that there is no God but I. That's upon the ring of power, the ring of Suleiman. Muhammadun Rasuli. Muhammad is my messenger. That's the ring of Suleiman. Although it's Suleiman's ring, it has the name of the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam upon him. That, the beast manifests with that ring. He manifests with the staff of Moses. He manifests with the Ark of the Covenant in the tradition. But it's with the ring. Because initially when people see the beast, like Tani Daddy, they run from the beast. And the first people to see the beast are those who are in the, who are in the outer lies, in the desert regions. They're the various ones who, who spot it. And then who comes in the desert, this beast manifests. The beast, the literal beast, manifests. Nobody believes. It's the Bedou who was speaking. Or but to Hajj, that's when the beast manifests, right there at Safa. Comes right out of Safa in the tradition of itself. And then people run for their life. And then the beast pursues them. Because it's good. And so then the beast then will stamp them right here with the ring of Solomon, Sulaiman alayhi salam. And then you will see Nur, light, begin to appear upon their foreheads. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said. And those who were stamped, khalas, they saved. And when people see they're being stopped and they're becoming the lumen, these are the last believers, okay? People realize, oh, 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 it's a good beast. So now they run after the beast because the Prophet says that the beast just disappears. Meaning he gets you, you don't get him. And those believers, they're the last ones. That's when Allah Ta'ala now stares the wind and it takes what the soul of each and every single believer who has that stamp. Even the son of Mary, alayhi salam, the son of Mary, Jesus, son of Mary, alayhi salam, that final will. And then you have Ashar al Nas, and you have what? The most wicked of all people upon the face of the earth, alayhi taqum al upon them, the hour will fall. If we want to be close companions with Imam Mahdi and Isa, what shall we do? You, you do that which your teachers have told you to do, which you've taken in transmission from the Prophet, alayhi wa sallam. And the affair don't change, and the nature of truth is not subject to change. And as Imam Malik Rahimullah Ta'ala said, that which rectified the early people, rectified the latter people. And the Menhaj is one, the Menhaj does not change. And when the Menhaj changes, when the way changes, that's what you call bid'ah. That's what innovation is by critical definition. Okay? So, yani khalas. And I hear these questions, Allah will with these two questions. And one question it states, is there any narration evidence proof with the concept of a person's soul being taken I quote the hands of Allah Himself. No, I never heard that. Yani. Okay, it's, it's well known that the souls of, yani, of human beings are seized by Azrael, the angel of death. And is there any evidence of the awliya returning to earth after death to guide the ummah to support Sayyidina Isa? No, Taala, but it's a living age. It's a age of living age. So beings who, yani, maybe some people believe have died, but they're not dead. Okay, that Jesus is son of Mary alayhi salam. And of those who retain in that age, and around Jesus we mentioned like Ashab al Kahf, it's mentioned. Okay, and that's the beginning of Surah Al-Kahf, the reasons you recite against the Antichrist. Because they will be present. But amongst them also Khidr alayhi salam. And remember now he brings his commentary for Sahih Muslim, Khidr alayhi salam, Rajah. Yeah, his dominant opinion, Khidr, and he khalas still alive. Well, does he have, eh? Manifest at the end of time. And he's the one, he's the supreme martyr upon that day, or the greatest martyr to ever live, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa says in the, in the tradition. Eh? That when the Antichrist well, yeah, he approaches Medina to Munawar, outside of Medina to Munawar, then this man of the Prophet said is the greatest martyr. Yeah, on that day, or the greatest martyr, the Prophet Sallallahu said, the Rabbi mentions that he approaches, and then the army of the Antichrist take hold of him. And then he, he says, do you believe that you want to go and see God, our Lord? He says, your Lord, that's the Antichrist. And then you really saw the Tuna Ali, that he wants to now kill him, and then one of the army says, didn't our Lord said we don't kill anybody? And that's one of the most amazing, in the age of the Antichrist, you're not seeing a lot of killing. That's passed through the age of the Mahdi. The Antichrist is not about killing. The Antichrist is about idlal, misguidance. That's the Imam al-Ghazali rahimullah ta'ala says, Khayato. That is the furthest extent of what the Antichrist comes with is to misguide you from the truth, not to kill. Huh? So look, even commanded his people not to kill. And so thereby they say, take him to our Lord, then. 
And then they seek permission from the Antichrist to then bring this being into his presence. And then the Antichrist says, do you believe I'm the actual, I'm God? And he says, no, I believe you are the Antichrist or prophet, sorry, they were something described. And then the Antichrist thereby when she saw and what and strikes him in two. He strikes him up from Qarrat, strikes him in two, cuts him into two. Then in the riwayah, the different riwayahs of the riwayahs, Ib, yeah, Yubrib, that he sends one half away and the other half away. And then he's walking right through to show you that this is not an illusion. He's trying to show you like magicians do. Seen them and they saw people in, in half in the box and then they walk through it. Uh, and they're playing games. But the Antichrist here walks through. Then the Antichrist returns back and then he commands for the body to come back together. And then the prophesizing to the body comes back together and then you class, he brings them back to life. Okay? That real as khawariq, that he kills him and brings him back to life. Now do you believe I'm God? <laughs> and he says, yeah, all you have did is to increase me in certainty that you are the Antichrist now. And that's all you've did. And then the Antichrist thereby goes to strike him, to kill him finally, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creates here from his neck all the way to his chest, Nuhas. He has an impenetrable fortress. Yeah, and the Antichrist is striking him and can't kill him. And so the Antichrist then takes hold of him and then commands him to be cast into fire. And then the Prophet says, writes writing to Jannah, he goes. That's the greatest martyr upon that day. And the Imams are upon that Khadab in Surah Al Kahf. And the third narrative. Okay, the narrative of Fawqa Kulli Di Ilm in Alim. Above everybody of knowledge is somebody of different knowledge, of higher knowledge. Okay? You drink from an ocean and I drink from a different ocean. Sayyidina Khidr says to Sayyidina Musa ibn Imran alayhi salam. Okay? And yeah, likewise, Ashab al Kahf. Opinion, there's an opinion there that that is not Khidr. That's one of Ashab al Kahf. That's one of the, of the, the youths of the cave who's the one of the Antichrist kills, who's the greatest martyr upon that day. That's opinions we find inside of our tradition, likewise. Okay? And Allah ta'ala alam. So the issue of yeah, the awliya returning back from the death, the death meaning they died, souls departed from form, and then they brought back to life, Allah ta'ala alam. But what we do know is that it's an age of those who have extended life. And in that age, all of those who have extended life, their life is going to come to an end. All of them. Whether they be the forces of good like Jesus, or whether they be the forces of evil like the Antichrist. They'll all be what? And they'll all be brought to an end in that very same age. And they'll all taste of death, kullu, nafsin, the iqat al Okay? Questions here of Satan, Awliya, who arrive in our day and age, taken bay'ah with the Imam Mahdi, then we say hello to Adam Adam. And these Awliya who have taken bay'ah with the Mahdi himself, then I suppose you have to find them and ask them themselves. Okay? Yeah. How do you recognize people who take the form of demons and devils? And yeah, we live in an age of that. And, and, yeah, we don't believe because we don't see yeah, people. Uh, that's what we live in an age of. We live in an age of, like the Imams, they said that demons are now being unleashed. It's a, de it's a very, very demonic age. And demons, not just in the unseen world, you were Swiss Ufis to do it in that, whispering into the hearts of men from behind. Uh, but demons transmuted into the form of man. Okay? Now, your business is not with demons, but your business is what is protection from demons. Like Imam Ghazali rahimahullah ta'ala says that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Allah min i'ud, a'udhu bika min hamazat al-shayateen wa'udhu bika rabbiya yahdurun The way to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Oh Allah, I take refuge to you from hamazat al-shayateen The hamazat al-shayateen are the insinuations, the agents of demons The agents of demons, I am aging you on to perform evil To stray from the path of truth Wa'udhu bika And I take refuge in you and yahdurun that they manifest, transmute into form at its highest level. I take refuge in you. And Ghazali says, that's the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He's making that dua. The Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And since when will a demon age him or affect him? Or since when will a demon even confront the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Demons. I mean, demon will confront Abu Huraira as in the hadith. But they're not going to confront, confront the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It's like they don't confront like the Hadith of Umar. The Shaytan Al-Akbar, the Yafir, the Dhil Umar, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said. 
He flees from the shadow of Umar ibn Khattab. Don't confront Umar ibn Khattab. Because that's how Vika is, right? These are people of Vika in and of itself, okay? And so these are the types of du'a that our tongue should be moist with, okay? And like one of the most common places, look, one of the most common places with the demons are going to are going to seek to deviate you inside of wudu. That's where it begins before they get inside of salah. And that's one of the du'as of wudu eh? at the beginning of wudu. That du'a in and of itself fortifies you. And it should be a du'a that's common upon our tongue, the vicar that we should make inside of our day and age. So the issue is not engaging demons, recognizing demons. The issue is an issue of protection, fortification from them. But they can be recognized, huh? And it is the Western education system a manifestation of the Dajjal system? Is the ink the island of the Dajjal? That's what I was saying, the ink is the island of the Dajjal. Allah, maybe it is. Well, uh, the question's in problem then, it's me, because he wrote it with ink. I don't know, Allah, 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 it's a manifestation of the Dajjal system. Yani any system, any system of education that does not guide you to Allah Ta'ala and His Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, does not clarify your purpose in life and empower you to fulfill that purpose in life, no doubt is a manifestation of Islam, a manifestation of the Antichrist. No doubt that is ta'fir, what I mean man, a ta'fir is an effect of the Antichrist upon that. That's no doubt whatsoever, okay? As for issues of ink being the island of the Dajjal, then Allah Ta'ala Alam. You know, we watch that type of stuff, like one of the tech we left, that somebody made about the days of the Antichrist. Like, like, a, like a, a, a day is like a year, huh? and then it's like a month, the Prophet says in the Hadith and Tirmidhi. The second day is like a month, and the third day is like a, is like a week. But he said the day is like a year, a year is, is here a thousand, year like a thousand with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, thousand years. And then the, like a, a month, three hundred years. And then like a what? They're like a week, 70 years. And so then, how are they going to interpret that? That's the one that we have on the made, is that they interpret a thousand years, Britain. Britain's a thousand years, the rule of Britain, 1,000 years. Okay, that's what it means. And then, yeah, the class, what's the 300 years? America, the rule of America. Then what's the 70 years? The rule of what of Israel? I don't say that, Allah, I don't know. I don't know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, yeah, a day is like a year, a day is like a year. Yeah, Again, to all these thousand years, and that it's Britain, that it's America, and that it's, it's, it's Israel in and of itself. Maybe yeah, Britain, I yeah, mean, doesn't have a good seer, does it? Doesn't have a good history. Doesn't have a good history. Uh, this island, uh, khalas. Uh, our prayer, and khalas. Uh, 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 as we discussed, uh, alhamdulillah, maybe has a good future. But history is not so good of the island. And in America, mm, doesn't have a good history. It's America. Doesn't have a good history. Whatsoever. There's not been a single president in the history of America saying that they sanctioned war, except Jimmy Carter. That's not good, Yanni. When all you did is kill and slaughter and you say that's not good. And we're just being just here. This is not an like anti American. Rant, this is just here, yeah, the scales of justice with Jaunaka Wasata. We made you a balanced nation. Israel, same narrative as America. You have the same narrative. That's why um, uh, one of them made mention, that's why one, America can't say anything against Israel. Because the narrative is the same. It's both you say plans, both the, the, the slaughter of the, the inhabitants of that land. What can America tell Israel when they did the same to the natives of the land in and of itself? But Israel doesn't have a good history likewise. And so that's not taken away from that point, but to now say that's what is meant in the hadith of the Prophet وسلم, in the hadith in Tirmidhi, then khalas, we stand before our Lord with that, huh? if that's what one believes. If anyone have any questions, inshallah ta'ala, do you have any questions? And the question here relates to, to, to the hadith which is in Sahih Muslim, hadith in Abdullah bin Abbas, that is it incumbent for one to read the dua of yani, which seeks protection? You seek protection from the punishment of hell and from the punishment of the grave and from the tribulation of the Antichrist and from the tribulation of life and death. Is that incumbent to read? He said, Ikhtilaf al-Fuqaha, the Fuqaha are odds in that regard. Of those who say it's wajib and of those who say it's mundu. 
I'd say that it's between recommended and wajib of them, you said. And I said, that's why Imam Muslim, he calls Imam Tawun, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he's looking for in there as wajib. And often the Fuqaha of the Shafi school, and likewise, will give it's wajib, although it's not the wajib, it's not the opinion of the school. The opinion of the school that it's mustahab to, to actually recite that du'a. Okay, and so if the answer is yes, as with issues are answered of yes, the question is asked him. If the answer is yes, and he says, when does that occur? After tashahud and after salawat upon the Prophet there. Okay, that's the point. At the point of dua. Okay, tashahud wajib, no doubt. Salawat ala Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wajib. That's after that. That's what we're speaking of you know, the mahal of dua, the very end of the prayer. In the sitting, that's the point one would um, recite it. Yeah, qabla taslim. Min salat ya qabla taslim. Okay, well, how to use it? Yeah, hadith. In al he said the hadith is in, in Sahih Muslim. Uh, uh, Ibn Majid and others who speak about it. And what does Messiah mean? And yeah, should we move to the sacred places now? Yeah, the Messiah, the yeah, issue of the Messiah, yeah, yeah, Akhtar bin Khamsin, yeah, there's more than 50 different interpretations of the Messiah, the Messiah, of what it means linguistically. And likewise, with the Dajjal, over 10 different what, interpretations about what the Dajjal means linguistically. But in terms of the question here of the Messiah, the upshot of it is Mesh. And Mesh of its meanings is transmutation. Mesh. And Mesh can be like Mesh, the issue of transmutation, transmuted. And some say that's why he's the Messiah, the transmuted one. Of the meanings of Mesh is the transmutation of his face. That his face turns. Mesh. Of the meanings of Mesh is that his eye is what is closed over. Of the meanings of mess, yimsah al that khalas, he, he steps upon every um, sit, uh, sit on the face of the earth, that yimsah al okay? Like he's itinerant. There is the qibr fi makan. He's not in any single place. Look, like the Antichrist, he doesn't have a capital city. His age is the age of movement, where he moves from place to place in order to deviate people. That's the Antichrist. That's mess, that's the Messiah. And that latter meaning is, you say, one of the same reasons why Jesus is called the Messiah. Of the Messiah, Jesus, is Jesus has no place, yeah. Jesus is, is an itinerant prophet. And if Jesus travels, one day he's in Palestine, the next day you find him in Egypt. Jesus travels, travels, wherever he lays his heart, that's his home. Jesus is the Son of So that's why majority of the statements of Jesus, even in our tradition, you find him out there in the Bawadi, out there in the wilderness, Jesus is the Son of So he's the Messiah from that perspective. Okay, although he doesn't travel the entire air like the Antichrist, but he's still itinerant. But he's also the Messiah because Yemsah. Yemsah. And Yemsah means he anoints people. And Jesus is the anointer. And if he touches you, khalas, he heals you. He's the healer. That's what the meaning of the Messiah. But as he raised Jesus, the son of Mary, alayhi salam. And some of them say that you don't call the Antichrist the Messiah, the Dajjal of the ulama. They prefer to call him the Messiah, which is the Lugha, with the Kha, which is the issue of Mesh, and the transmuter, and the one transmuted. Okay? That's the Antichrist. That's the meaning of Messiah, but it has a lot of indications linguistically. Should we move to and the Jal is the imposter, Yughati, the Mughati. How you, yeah, he covers over, okay? Truth with falsehood. Sayyidina Hudayfid al Yaman, he said that so long as you know religion, you know deen, then you're able to tufadriq bayn al haqq wal that you're able to distinguish between truth and falsehood. And so the Antichrist is going to capitalize upon ignorance, especially yani, ignorance meaning ignorance of the soul. You can have all the knowledge you want, but if the knowledge doesn't impact your reality, then khalas, yani, what's the benefit of What's the benefit of knowledge? Okay? So he takes advantage of ignorance and yukhati. So that the jal is the one who covers over truth with falsehood. Where literally the Arabic language is when you take a camel who's diseased and then you cover over the camel. And you put tar over the camel in order to fool the actual buyer that the camel's of good health. But it's really ill, it's really as an ailment, but the ailment is beyond sight. Uh, you can't see it. Okay? Hakka the Antichrist. But Allah Ta'ala Ala the Antichrist, he don't look like God. <laughs> Does he? Allah Ta'ala look like that? Sure. Even for the answer of a poor fist, and all that. And Abnara Vul Khoisara. An Antichrist is going to look like that with one eye and all of that. And in, that's what people lost their intellect. Lost their intellect, like the Imams of the Sahaba radiallahu anhu were wrong. See, in that day, on his final emergence, the majority of people have just lost their intellect. And 
They say the majority of people have lost all sense. Just like you believe this one-eyed creature is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet told us, just be certain, la tarawna rabbakum. Look at this word, you will not see your Lord. They tell you you're going to see it. لا ترون ربكم حتى تموت until you die. And, and the seeing of the divine subhanahu wa ta'ala is next world reality for those who survive the tribulations in and of itself. Huh? Should we move to the sacred places now? Yeah, I don't know. We definitely got to do something about our lives, yeah, I mean, and that is sort of really evident huh? because we live lives of heedlessness. And if we do, and we live in places of heedlessness, and we're not doing anything about the heedlessness that surrounds us. And we're illegitimate citizens according to many of the fuqaha. Because in, in these lands, what makes us legitimate is the issue of doing something about the heedlessness state that you find people in. The issue of da'wah, with irshad, guiding people. That's what makes us legitimate in front of Allah Ta'ala. Otherwise, we're illegal citizens. Ekka the nukbis. Ta'ala with the fuqaha, the fuqaha themselves. Radi Allah Ta'ala anhu wa dhan. But we have to do something about our state. We really do, yani. And we have to encourage people to do something about their state. Uh, because this is an emergency state, yani. When the Dajjal Antichrist is doing his wickedness, yani, what would Shaitan be doing? Uh, gonna crack a joke then, but yani. Shaitan is doing the Khalaf and the Jah is doing his bidding. <laughs> what does Shaitan have to do in that age? When the bidding is now do, being done by the Antichrist himself. Okay? That's like the Prophet said to him in the Sayyad. When the Prophet was addressing him in the Sayyad in Sahih Muslim, he said, Mayad al He said, What is that you see? What is that you see? He says, Bah! I see an ocean. Uh, an ocean. And the Prophet says, Arsh, Arsh Shaitan. And what he was seeing, he was seeing the throne of the devil. As the Prophet said, informed us that it's over water. And, and many believe in the proximity of the island of the Antichrist. And many are going to locate the island of the Antichrist into what? Into the, um, the uh, some put it at Bermuda. I'd say some put it the western land inside of Bermuda. Some of them, as we took from some of our teachers, they put it at Florida, right there at the tip of Florida, in and of itself. Some of them put it. But it's just one of the islands. Hadith of the Prophet, it shows you that it shifts. The Prophet and the Hadith of Tamim al Dari, the Prophet first words that it's in Bahr al Sham. Bahr al Sham. Bahr al Sham is like the Mediterranean. Okay? Hadith in Sahih Muslim, Mediterranean. Right? So that like it never went that far west. Okay? Then the Prophet thereby said, Bah Yemen. Look at the Rasul Sahih said, Bah Yemen. Bah Yemen, the Arabian Sea. On the islands of the Arabian Sea. Same hadith. Next week he says. Then the Prophet says, Al Mashriq, Al Mashriq, Al Mashriq, Al Mashriq, the East, the East, the East, the East, the Prophet says. And sort of what you get from that is like, you know what I mean? Shifting, the issue of him, shifting islands, okay? And the maximum security, I mean. So in case somebody has ideas of going to Bermuda and finding them. Are <laughs> you? Any questions, inshallah ta'ala? Any questions? Um, you know, the, the concept of the, the three characters and the Christ, Isa Islam, and, and Isa Islam. There must be you know, two of these characters living in a state of the opposite world of the Is the Imam, is he also in that space at the moment? Or is he not involved? Or? Then who, who's in the world that we can't see? Sorry. So Isa Islam also can't see. Okay, so Jesus is in, is in the world of the unseen. Jesus is in the second heaven. That's Jesus. Yeah. And then obviously the Jal, he's no, he's not 15, he's a lot older than that. The Dijal, but the Dijal is not in the world of the unseen. No, the Dijal is in the world of the seen. If somebody, quote unquote, Allah Ta'ala granted the tawfiq, they could find him. Not that you should, <laughs> but you could. Okay? Yeah, yeah. And then the third one was who? Uh, the the Mahdi is not an issue of the unseen. Yeah, the Mahdi is. What do you mean by that? Is he, is he alive? When you use the word, yeah, the question about is the Mahdi, the Imam Al Mahdi in the world of the unseen, when you use the world of the unseen, it means literally no matter how much you search upon the face of the earth, you can never find him. Because he's not in the tangible realm. That's what, that's what the world of unseen means. Okay? That's not the issue of the Mahdi. Okay? The Mahdi is not at any point inside of that type of world, the world of the unseen. But the Mahdi, the Mahdi is in the world of the Maksus, the world of the tangible realm. 
Jesus, yes, the world will be unseen. And the Antichrist, no, he's not in the world to be unseen. And if people say it's probably enough, they can find him. And they will, yes. Tamima, there he found him. Okay? He found him. So, I mean, that tells us about it. Yeah. No. And it after the Antichrist has entered every town and city and he's gone to another town or city, what will the state of the people be? Will they be governed by some of the army of the Dajjal or will they just be like zombies? No, they are the army of the Antichrist. No, when he's left that city, say he came to Brazil. They're the army of the Antichrist. They believe in him as their Lord and Savior. And they follow him everywhere? Yeah. Not necessarily follow him everywhere, but now he's their Lord and Savior. That's, that's their state. And that's why the Prophet says there are people from the believers who believe they're fortified and they said, you know, the Antichrist manifest, let's go and see what this is all about. And so they go to the Antichrist and when they stand in his presence, khas, and he just strips them of faith. Meaning, whoever faces off with them, then it's not going to be good. And, and that's the first meaning of Fawaj Surah Al Kaf, the beginning of Surah Al Kaf. The boys of the cave, you know, those six aristocrats and the one shepherd and the dog of Akim, they ain't facing off with anybody, any tyrannical person of misguidance. They have hit the hills, as they've said. And that's what we speak about. The age is the age where you just hit the hills. Okay? You don't face off with the Antichrist. Even the Mahdi himself doesn't face off with the Antichrist. That's telling you something. That Mahdi just stays inside of Jerusalem fortified. And that's, that's what the Mahdi does. Until the manifestation of Ibn Maryam Okay. The, the cities, will they have normal life like they do now, work and college and all, or what, what state will they be in? That's what I mean. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Allah Allah. 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 You mentioned that um, uh, we should go to the, you know, the, the hills as it is, but you also mentioned earlier that um, even a hamlet will be visited by the Jah. So. <coughs> I mean, so Hamlet means in, like a small Hamlet is like a small village. A small village, yeah. yeah. So if people did go and create this village. Yeah. No, we're not talking about creating villages. Okay. That's what we're speaking about. First and foremost, in terms of in Sihabat, of our removal, this is first and foremost spiritual. This is fulfilled through in Allah, as Allah Taala says in their yet, flee to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. In the that I am now moving towards my Lord. He's going to give me Buddha guidance. So this is the first and foremost that we have to flee to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first and foremost. And then, yani, khalas. Yani, you know yani, where you can be physically protected. And you know that the same places, if you manifest at that point in time, then you're good. But yani, we have a lot of warnings before that. Before you start speaking about that from a perspective, yani, the Mahdi be the The Mahdi has manifested as it. You get the point. Yani. Any questions, inshallah? Any questions now? Would there be a political party in those districts, Mr. Warren? Because there's many, many hadiths that mention about war and then good times. And the, so is that, is the belief that there will be another political mahdi and then the final mahdi will then fight at the time of the Dajjal? Uh, yeah, we mentioned that before. Issues of dress rehearsals. There are most people who claim to be the mahdi and, they, and the, there's the actual signs of them being the Mahdi historically, from one perspective, could have held true, but it's not the Mahdi. So from that perspective, you can say from that, even the Hashimi himself, in the time of the Mahdi, who claims he had the Sifat of the Mahdi, as we mentioned, that some say he's because of, of the Mahdi himself. You have the Sifat, but that's not the Mahdi. So this issue of, is there going to be multiple Mahdis before the final Mahdi? No. It, it's not the same phenomenon as the Antichrist. But there are multiple Antichrists. Uh, who are projections of the one physical antichrist that have happened. So we just ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for tawfiq, inshallah, and protection. Month of Rajab, it's a blessed month. Remember, this is the month where you flee to Allah ta'ala. It's the month of the great return, the month of tawbah, the month of istighfar, the month of what? Of the ruj of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ila, 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 ila rabbihi. Qabr al Qawsain wa Adna sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam wa sallam. Inshallah, we just try to sort of expose ourselves to the winds of the moment, inshallah, to barakallah, because that we turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If it's not already begun, it has to begin at some point in our life, inshallah, to barakallah. And if it hasn't already begun, then there's not, a there's not a more blessed time for it to begin than now. Especially inside of a month with his ta'yidat and faydanat coming from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah ta'ala assists the slaves inside of this month. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for assistance. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for protection. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for faith, fortified. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us faith. You know, in the age in which we live in, which, that faith is tainted with doubt. That faith is tainted with hypocrisy. And the Prophet he said that when you see the age, 
when there are four star towns, that there are two citadels, two camps of faith that is not tainted by hypocrisy and disbelief, that is not purified by faith, I just have an iota of faith, from that moment on, await the manifestation of the Antichrist on that day or the next day. Okay, so we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he makes us of those who, mashallah, tabarak Allah, whose faith is 40, 45 and purified and free from all types of impurities and Allah ta'ala grants us securities. And so we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to raise us in degrees. Subhanahu wa ta'ala, tawfiq wa nadar minhu. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sallam.